Hi everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's everyone doing? How are you doing? With I me? hope everybody can. <laughs> uh, oh, nobody ever asks me this. <laughs> I'm doing fine. I'm doing good. I'm perfect. How are you doing, Marion? Pretty good. Pretty good. Looking forward to your grilling this Pretty evening. <laughs> Grilling? Nah, 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 nah. No grilling tonight. No grilling. That that's for our DM. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi everybody. I just uh, let you guys um, settle down for like hey, a minute everybody. before we started. So we get give all the people a chance to join before we start. So settle in, grab yeah. some popcorn, and enjoy today's Q and A. This is Marcia. She seems so, very rowdy, you know. So I think we got we've got a bit of a crowd tonight. <laughs> we're gonna have quite the party yeah, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So first and foremost, we have to talk introductions. So everybody, if you guys don't know yet, meet Marion Lil John, an accomplished artist, educator, and esteemed member of the New Masters Academy community. Known affectionately, as some of you may already know, as STEM. Her artistic journey began, began with a passion for portraiture during her uh, school years, uh, setting the stage for a lifelong ded dedication to the arts. She graduated with top honors in fine art printmaking from Glasgow School of Art. And uh, she has versatile skills and com uh, encompass drawing, painting, lithography. Is that how you pronounce it in English? Maybe lithography. <laughs> Lith lithography. Lithography, thank you. Yeah. It's a bit different. In yeah. Slogan, so I'm sorry. Yeah, I like the twist on it. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Etching, screen printing, and bookmaking. Uh, she possesses an extensive knowledge on art history, spanning both traditional and contemporary artists and designers. Since joining New Masters Academy back in March of 2021, Mar uh, Mar Marion has immersed herself in numerous New Master Academy courses, becoming well-versed in the curriculum that we have. As a coach, she excels in guiding students through the interactive courses, offering personal personalized feedback and installing confidence in their creative endeavors. So yeah, Marion, <laughs> that's, that's it for me. Like, I don't have much Thank to you very say. Much. Do that's... you want to add anything? No, I'm, I'm good with that. That was lovely. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I put a lot of thought into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to just jump into um, yeah, yeah. the questions Absolutely. or do you want to like add anything? I'm quite happy to jump into the questions. Okay. I see March already noticed the little skeleton behind you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So before we <laughs> before we jump into the Q&A, I will as always like to ask everybody to fill out our guest book. Just uh, let us know what you think about the event, about New Masters Academy, your experience with us. It will be greatly appreciated. Okay. And now without further ado, let's start the questions. If anybody has a question, Drop them in the chat. We'll be answering live questions as well as the questions you already posted before in the Discord. So, Marion, I mentioned printmaking. Yes. We all already saw you demoing some printmaking. So, as a printmaker, what have you learned that has helped you in other mediums? Okay, I think, well, that's a really good question. I think one of the things about printmaking um, is, first of all, you need to do a degree of planning. So it's not really a spontaneous medium to work in all the time. So you have to figure out what you're going to do. You need to kind of like think about what order you're going to do things in. And also it kind of helps you as well to develop some creativity. And um, with printmaking, you have the chance to do lots of iterations with your work. So you can try out various different versions of what you want to do. So it's really good for playing with ideas and experimenting with possibilities. And I think that's something that um, I quite like to take into all aspects of my work. So it's a little bit kind of, um, let's see what happens. What would happen if I did this? Um, what would happen if I tried this out? So I think printmaking gives you a really lovely launch pad for having a, a kind of um, experimental mindset as an artist. That's a lovely answer. It definitely makes you think a lot. Because I remember when I did the lithography, yeah. Um, back in high school, 
Yeah, I got so confused because you have to actually reverse yeah. the contrast. Yeah, and I think it's just yeah. that idea so, of if you try and do color printmaking as well, you've really got to think about how colors interact with each other and, you know, which colors are lighter and, and it, what order you actually do things in, it becomes really important. And another vital aspect of printmaking is kind of being a good responsible citizen because most of the time printmaking facilities are shared and it's about leaving the space really beautiful for the next person to come along to. So it kind of teaches you really good um, professional working practices um, so that you're kind of thinking about the other artists around about you. And so I think it's really good from those points of view as well. Plus it's, it's nice to do um, um, work that's one step removed from your hand as well. So you kind of have that moment of real excitement when you do the kind of pull reveal, you're not quite sure what's going to happen when you kind of lift up the paper. So it's got that moment where you're just waiting to see what the artwork's actually going to look like. So it has that kind of moment of magic. Yeah. Yeah, the stone rolling from your heart when it actually succeeds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a good moment. All right. <laughs> It is, it is. <laughs> okay, do you recommend any artist at any level to get into printmaking or do you believe solid fundamentals are a must first? Well, I mean, I think I think fundamentals are always going to help you in every aspect of your work. Um, and in printmaking, you could obviously explore your mark making and your kind of like tonal variations and things like that. But I mean, obviously I showed you Kath Kolvitz in my um, talk the other day on printmaking. And for me, she was one of the kind of like pivotal artists that kind of really got me excited about printmaking and, and made, made me feel like an emotional connection because I feel as if every stroke that she makes kind of tells a story. So yeah, I think Kath Kolvitz's work. I also love Edvard Munch's work as well. And obviously the Japanese printmakers, their work is, is absolutely stunning. So. Yeah, I mean, I think you should always combine fundamentals with then having fun <laughs> and exploring what you can do with those fundamentals, putting those things together and actually playing about with imagery, using the knowledge from your fundamental skills. So it's nice to kind of get that knowledge, but then think, how am I going to actually take that knowledge and apply it? And then you're going to get a really nice result that feels personal and it's something that you're kind of planning and making. So take those skills, but then, you know, add some stuff to it. <laughs> yeah, everybody do your fundamentals. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what is your absolute favorite medium to work in? See, this is an impossible question because, and I think this is partly why I love teaching so much. I'm a little bit of a chameleon. So I love, I just love everything. You know, I think that there's all the different media have different moments of joy and different moments of kind of like frustration with them. And I, I'm trying to think if there's a media I don't really like, but I think I love them all. So I think, I think that makes it kind of tricky for me to then go down one particular path. But um, yeah, I, I couldn't say. I, I just really enjoy working across all different media and I find the things to be exciting and fun about all different aspects of um, exploring materials. And I think maybe that is something that came from the printmaking time and that, you know, in the time that I was in printmaking, we also studied painting as well. We studied sculpture, we studied conceptual art, we studied a bit of traditional art. So it's kind of like my whole kind of art experience has been quite, let's try this out, let's try that out. So I, I quite enjoy the idea of having a really open mind and thinking about how can I use this media um, really well and also quite like combining things together too so I know that's not really an answer is it <laughs> well it is an answer <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> but let's say which material do you usually you know yeah rotate back to the most yeah. let's say the most, the most. let me see doesn't have to see. be your favorite well when I mean I do like charcoal I think charcoal is a nice material you know I enjoy working in that media and I quite like I quite like a graphic feel to work as well, quite like strong. And I suppose that kind of, again, comes from that German expressionism influence. Um, so I quite like drama and I do enjoy, you know, probably pastel painting. That's probably with the chart. So maybe I like soft smudgy media. <laughs> We've got somewhere soft smudgy media that's dramatic. That's what I like best. 
Wait, do I remember correctly? Was the portrait you did, the green yeah. one with the green background, was that pastel? Yeah, so that was soft pastel. And, and I think yeah. there's something, yeah. for me, I guess, there's something really nice about getting all sort of into the painting, getting covered in the pastel and, and kind of pushing it around and um, really enjoying that kind of process of um, using your hands directly on, on the painting. I, I do quite like that feeling of pastel. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually hate like getting anything on my It does horrify some people. Under the nail. It really does horrify, you know, yeah. and, and when I teach students, some students are just, they just can't bear having stuff on their fingers and, and it's, it's, but but for me, I, I, there's nothing I love more than getting really grubby <laughs> and covered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? I wonder, I wonder if you could like do that with gloves. Yeah, I never you tried. You could do it with but, gloves, like, but it's rubber. Where so. would the fun be? <laughs> <laughs> well, to each their own, they say. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a life question okay, if you're okay yeah, with this. With that one. Uh, okay, so we have a question. Marianne, you had your own studies prior to New Masters Academy and your own practice. Then you joined New Masters Academy. What elements of New Masters Academy particularly took you forward? Okay, so I think um, the classes that really oh just just drove me kind of like um so much further forward and also sparked an incredible amount of interest for me were the initial live classes that i did with elia on digital painting and it was just the combination of his knowledge the fun of the class the kind of camaraderie of the students as well it just drove me to really think about pushing my portraiture much further. And I did actually make a massive amount of progress in that time in terms of um, being able to turn ahead, form ahead and make it feel 3D. So I think that class had um, a really strong influence on me, but um, the kind of thing that I did when I was doing that class was for every live class I went to, I did the lesson from that class, but then during the week I'd do two or three other ones with the kind of knowledge from that lesson. And I think that's what kind of like solidified the kind of learning for me. And then I did, after that course, I did the Renaissance head um, drawing class. And I think the knowledge of both of them coming together then really helped. So I think what I would say is when you're doing one class in isolation, it kind of teaches you some things, but it's then you bring information from another class and add it together to that and I kind of think with art knowledge, it's almost like you're making one of these really strong metal ropes where you're wrapping threads of knowledge round and round and round. And then you take another class, you've got more knowledge to wrap around that and your threads become stronger and your ability um, as an artist and its overall thing becomes much stronger. So, you know, even if you kind of don't quite know what you're going to take from a course, you will be absorbing knowledge from it. So it combines together. And I think that's one of the really good things about um, New Masters is that we have so many different courses that you can get a really holistic art education and become a really well-rounded artist. And yes, I was just, the first live classes that I did were with Elia and they're still on the course in the, the live class archive. And there's a thing, I did all of them. They're digital painting courses and I thoroughly recommend them for any artists who are interested in you know, doing any kind of painting because you'll learn a lot from doing those courses. They're really good. In fact, they're what made me decide to go for my subscription in the first place because I'd, I'd done a couple of them and I think it was during COVID time and they were running these live lessons, um, you know, free. You could just join in. And then the next one, you had to have a subscription. And I thought, oh, oh. And I, I wasn't at that time somebody who really took subscriptions to things. And I was really, you know, thinking, oh, will I do it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to take the subscription. So it was kind of like a, a well, actually incredibly life changing course for me, really. Um, but yeah, I think anybody who was on that live um, set of courses would agree with me that it, that it was um, quite amazing. Yeah, I remember I also watched the live class with Ilya, the digital painting yeah. one, and I uh, liked it very much, especially because he actually goes through not just one digital program, yeah. but multiple. Yeah, so I believe he goes from Photoshop to Rebel to there was some, one um, else. Clip Studio Paint. And, uh, yeah, 
and he- was it lipstick? Yeah, and he also did heavy paint as well, or something along those lines. And it's a heavy. Yeah. So um, yeah. weirdly, yeah. out of those, <laughs> out of those computer programs, <laughs> yes, oh which one would you say is the best? <laughs> Everybody knows me in Discord, so whoever talks to me, they, they, know. Know. they know. They know which one. <laughs> I don't want to do any advertisement. All programs are All great. All programs are good, and it's more about I'm just saying. it's more about your skills as an artist than what it's <laughs> But everybody has their favorite. That's true. That's true. It all comes to down how you use yeah. it. that's what I I'm also think say. it comes down to um, being familiar. So the one that you kind of use most often you kind of like have a soft spot for it so i think i think it's that kind of confidence yeah. and, and being really sure where everything is and how to use it gem, gem has the rider idea <laughs> down in the chat that's all i'm saying <laughs> until then <laughs> nope <laughs> okay jokes aside um what has been your favorite memory from your entire testing career it can be like all the way something yeah. when you first you know got something good created with a material that you yeah. could master at first you know a success, yeah. I succession mean, succession i guess you could say yeah I, I suppose for me probably one of my favorite moments was actually when i got my degree um really because mm -hmm. um when i went to art school really young i went straight from school and nobody in my family had done anything like that so it was like a really kind of unknown world to me and in my first term at art school I was still acting like a little kind of school child and I was there with the same kind of mindset as just someone that was at high school and I thought I was doing really well I thought I was working really hard and I was like really pleased with what I was doing and um and the first critique that I ever had first real critique just at Christmas time and I was in the situation as well where I was getting a crit from um a guy that I didn't know um, because my tutor was off um, ill. So I had this first critique from this chap and I was like, all kind of like, yeah, how's it gonna go? This is so nice. <laughs> and I was so excited about it. And uh, I was so torn apart. And um, basically he said to me, my work was terrible. It was derivative, it was dull, it was pedestrian. And there was no joy, there was no energy. There was no life about it at all. And if I kept going on like this, there's no way that I would actually continue and get a pass. Um, so I was understandably completely devastated. And I walked all six miles home in the snow, crying all the way. And it was the Christmas holiday. So then I had the whole of the Christmas holidays to kind of like sob and cry and um, reflect on things. So at that moment, I kind of, you know, like had my sort of gone with the wind moment where I decided I would never have a bad crit again. <laughs> so I kind of really took on board the advice that the um, that I had gotten the critique and, I, and it dawned on me that, yeah, I had just been going with this really childish mindset, like I'm still doing kind of classwork and I was just being really kind of, I don't know, cautious and nervous about the work that I was doing. And basically after that moment, I just threw myself into every single moment and I had this kind of like fear of and it would be a real fear of failure because he told me that I would fail and people did fail round about me on a fairly regular basis lots of people failed the course and um, I just pushed myself really hard and when I graduated I graduated with top marks um, in the art school and it was just such a nice moment because I knew that it was through me just kind of really making that strong decision to actually take every opportunity and um, try out things in as many different ways as I could and never be scared um, to actually push myself or push my work because it dawned on me that being at art school and trying to do well there was the most important thing to me and I didn't want to lose the chance of that so I really wanted to kind of make the most of that opportunity so for me that was the best moment was actually getting my results back and seeing that the four years of really pushing really hard and um, putting all the hours in had paid off. So yeah, that was probably my best moment. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Conquer it, Yeah. there we go. Yeah, sometimes it's quite good when you, I mean, I, it can feel awful when you have a really harsh critique like that and it could destroy you. And it does yeah. destroy some people. I did know some people who did give up in those kind of moments but if you can kind of turn it around and think to yourself, well, 
I need to change things, I need to do things a bit differently, then you can kind of use it for, you know, powering your energy so that you don't want to be in that situation where you're vulnerable anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Turn it around, show them yeah. what you can do, <laughs> you know. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Another question. Since joining New Masters Academy back in 2021, you've completed numerous courses and now work as a coach. Yeah. How has being part of the New Masters community influenced your growth as an artist and an educator? Okay, so I mean, that's that's a really good question. And I think that um, being a coach is, is, has been one of the biggest privileges for me um, as an artist because um, I've been a teacher for quite a long time. I've been a teacher for um, 13 years and it's always really nice to work with high school students. Um, but you're taking their work to a certain level, you know, you know, they're just always going to be still just high school kids. They're not quite at the stage of going on to having a career. So being a coach is just really lovely because you're at that moment where you're with artists who are then looking forward to taking the next steps. And for me, the support from the community of coaching for myself personally has been, you know, phenomenal um, over the last year. And, you know, when you have those moments where you kind of think, oh, could I get the job done? You know, I'm not sure what I'm doing. There's always someone there to give you support and help you out. And that's like a really positive thing for me. And for me as a coach, I kind of want my students to work hard. I don't want them to, you know, not put the effort in because I think that it's only through really working hard that you, you make progress. But I want my students to be able to work hard really consistently across a long period of time. So I think it's really important that students um, have a realistic view of their schedule and work out what they can do sustainable and actually be able to work consistently across a long period of time so that they can keep going. And I think if you make incremental progress like that, it becomes incredibly powerful over time. And all those small, really good decisions add up to becoming a really good artist. So I think it's about um, consistency of practice and having a good supportive community around about you that, that really is key there. You have such beautiful answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um just before we go to the next question, I would like to, uh, to add that Marion is a one-on-one -on -one coach and a group coaching coach also. And sh we have a group coaching with her every Sunday evening in European time, which I believe is 11, yeah, yeah. 11 a.m. PT time. So Sunday is 11 a.m. PT time, if anybody is interested. Yeah, we, we do some different ones um, with the, we do some different, sorry, we do some different kinds mm -hmm. of um, sessions as well, where we do a little bit of group critique and we try and introduce different kinds of topics into the coaching. So it's been really marvelous fun, actually. It's been lovely to do. Yeah, they're, they're all interesting. Yeah. Uh, and they're very, like, the community is very integrated. Yeah. Is that the... Integrated, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the word. Integrated. Yeah. It's awesome. Everybody has such lovely critiques. Yeah. And we grow as a community. Yeah. Um, I have a question from Evan. What is, in your experience, some of the most important thing to keep in mind when encouraging and coaching children and teens? Yeah. What teaching methods have low success rates, in your opinion? Um, I'm not sure about what teaching methods have low success rates, really. That's that's kind of tricky to answer. But for me, when I'm teaching children, I think one of the most important things to do is to listen to the child, because um, then you understand what their interests are, what their passions are, and you can kind of engage with them with um, making artwork that they're going to really be inspired to make. Um, in my experience, yeah, well, here we go. Well, maybe the least effective thing to do is to be too rigid in what you tell children to draw because that can actually stop them wanting to do it at all. So when my children were very little, um, we just had lots of discussion about potential and what could you draw, what would happen if you tried this. Um, and I think, again, it's that exploratory nature that's really nice for teaching um, younger children. It's about being willing to try out different things. And the other thing that's always been very successful um, for me is 
allowing children access to lots of different materials so they can try out how different things feel and explore th the whole range of materials that are out there. And um, they enjoy that in a really big way. Um, certainly at a high school level, um, what works well with students is really exploring what intrigues them. So having um, a personal project works well with high school students and then they're actually driving the, the kind of narrative of the work that they're doing and they really then have a story to tell and they're not just making work that you know you're telling them to do but they're actually putting work out there that has a deeper meaning to them and that's when I begin to see some really powerful work from my students when they're actually um, developing and looking at artists as well I think that's been one of the most important things for students as they grow a little bit older opening up the the world of different artists to them so they can look to those artists for inspiration for ideas but then synthesize those ideas and pull the strands together with their own skills and their own techniques that they've been exploring so that they can then output something that feels unique and special to them and then they have a piece of work that really kind of captures that moment in time that they've been pushing through on the project okay talking about children <laughs> I know you're a mom yourself yeah. <laughs> to three yeah. lovely children. I'm, am I correct? Yeah, three, three, yeah. Three, yeah. We have <laughs> three lovely children. <laughs> and uh, we have actually a question. Um, I feel as parents, children are, are often seen as taken away from our free time and art studies. Yeah. How have you maintained your art practice as a mother? And how have your children actually enhanced your art? Okay, so I've got loads of answers for this one. So in many respects, my children are kind of responsible for my progress as an artist. I worked as a graphic designer for about 10 years and then um, I stopped doing that once I had very young children. And when I had my children very young, I had just such a desire, such a passion to draw them when they were little. So quite often when they were young, I would draw them while they were playing, when they were crawling about, different things like that. So it was this desire to be able to record you know, just their presence in the world, their moments that were, you know, intangible, that, that really brought me to being, you know, drawing on a really daily basis. And the other thing that was fantastic about having young children as well, was that when they are young, they are playful. So they want to draw, they want to paint, they want to play with clay. So we would just spend hours and hours and hours at the table together um, drawing and playing with them, um, you know, plasticine, playing with paint. They would be doing their kinds of drawings. I would be doing drawing that was a little bit different, but we're all together, we're all talking, we're all kind of being creative at the same sort of time. So this might be why my daughter wants to be an artist. <laughs> and my son wants a side hustle as an as um, illustrator. So, you know, I think it had its ramifications. But really what I think when you've got young children is you have a great chance to be creative. And I, I would also say that I feel like I'm still a child. I mean, I feel like I've never really grown up because my entire life, I've just been able to be playful, experiment, explore ideas and do things that lots of adults just don't get the chance to do. Um, and as my children have got older, I mean, certainly since I've been doing New Masters Academy, they, they just love it so much. And they're so incredibly supportive, so much so that my son has been making me dinner the last few nights when I've been too busy to make dinner. So, you know, like eventually, you know, they become, you know, really great adults that can then help you out with, um, you know, sorting out things for you as well. So, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm a bit unusual, but I've certainly found having children to be um, really useful as an artist. I think it's just a, such a source of joy to me. So. If you're struggling, think about ways that you can interact with your children when you are making art. So it's about um, sharing in that experience with them rather than thinking that your artwork is something out with that. And it can be, you know, just, just lots of simple things like, you know, you go out to the park, you take your sketchbook and your children can play on the swings and you can do a sketch and you go to the beach, you can pick up lovely rocks that you can then take home and draw. So, you know, think about your life in a kind of, um, holistic way so that you actually seize the joy when you can and think about always think about what is possible try not to dwell on 
you know, what's stopping you, think about, well, what can I do here? What What is possible? And um, see the kind of positive in, in the situations you're in and take every available opportunity to you as well. And then also you can have fun doing face painting as well, <laughs> with them, which is always great for every member of the family. Yeah. Um, children also really love to mimic people that they see. Yeah. I noticed that a lot when I was like babysitting because I'm not a mother yet. <laughs> so when I was babysitting, yeah, like I would also like try and get them into art, yeah. which was always actually always pretty successful. Yeah. Like I would just draw something super fast, like a bunny or something that they want with a tutu, you know. Yeah. And then they would color it yeah. and I would have some time to like sketch, exactly. uh, you know, my own stuff. And almost all children love drawing. Yeah. It's, 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 it's unusual for, you know, smaller children to not like it. I mean, occasionally you get one or two, but then, you yeah. know, sometimes it's just a case of then getting clay out and letting them play with clay or trying out a different media and they might lovely, you know, explore the lovely media of, of different things. So yeah, it's, it's thinking about what you can do to explore your artistic side when you're with them. Also, when they're toddlers and they're still young, yeah. like up to like 13, like maybe even like up to 16, yeah. you know, they have like a wild imagination. Yeah. Like they yeah. come up with yeah. a lot of crazy stuff. And it's fun. Yeah. I and mean, my cool. son, my son, yeah, like yeah. we started him on sketchbooks when he was pretty young. And I think he's got about 10 sketchbooks full of drawings from different stages of his life. And look, at, he loves looking back through those sketchbooks and seeing all his ideas and his skills, you know, develop and change. And, and it is a really lovely, you know, that's my recommendation to parents as well. Don't draw on loose sheets of paper, buy good quality sketchbooks for your children and keep them on a bookshelf. And then you've got them forever. Much easier to store than lots of loose paper. <laughs> and you can always go back and draw something yeah. you drew as a child. Well, my daughter loves, yeah, those she loves stories. doing that. She loves going back, looking through her sketchbook and then doing a redraw. So yes, yeah, it's, it's a great fun thing to do. Yeah. Children are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and drawing is awesome. Art is awesome. Everything's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Marion, what do you think helps a student be able to keep going with their art studies? Okay. I mean, so like, you know, for instance, I talked to you earlier about the story about feeling devastated and um, not quite knowing how to keep continuing with it. And um, what helped me at that time was, you know, having the structured curriculum to fall back on, the help from my tutors and also um, the classmates that were round about me. And for me, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm excited about working on the four year plan in New Masters Academy, because one of the kind of things that that really drives you is that idea that you've got an end point and you've got something to aim for. So knowing that you're striving towards, say, like a degree show or an end of term project really helps you kind of pull up your socks when time is tough, because you know that you've got something that you're actually working towards and you've got that end goal. And for me, it was really pushing towards, you know, I had four years to get this degree. I wanted it to be really good. Um, and I wanted to kind of like prove to myself that I had the right to be there. So I think having um, having a really clear goal is important. Having um, a good curriculum to follow really helps you as well. But it is important to have the support of classmates. And I felt at that time, I really did enjoy having people to talk to, people who would come in while I was working hard and say things like, oh yeah, that's really good. And those kind of little moments when you've been working really hard on a print and, and it's worked out well, and people are actually there and giving you some support and feedback and help when you're doing your work was really good too. And the other thing that I found really quite helpful um, when things things were tough was that idea that um, you just have to keep going. So it's like that idea if you just put one foot in front of the other, in front of the other, you do get further forward. It might not always feel like you've traveled very far forward, but it's only when you look back, you think, yeah, I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger at this. And I think it's just that idea of just the consistency, keeping going and having a sort of end point in mind to kind of like push you forward in your journey. Yeah, I believe the community is a huge part to keep you going. At least it was for yeah. me. I dropped art, 
like some people know I dropped art like two times before and ever since I joined new masters uh, like the discord community made so much yeah. change like whenever I feel like you know, I, I don't want to draw today or anything. There will be always somebody messaging me or anything, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, oh, have you drawn, have you done your drawing yeah. foundation? <laughs> so, but for real, like, there's always somebody in the chat yeah. room, you know, like drawing, streaming their art. And it's, it's a huge inspiration for when you're feeling down yeah. and feeling like you don't want to do something that day. Yeah. But yeah, seeing people actually work at yeah. it. It gives you that drive. And I think as well, it's those moments where you just find out that someone actually cares about you. Someone's noticed that you're not there. Or someone actually, you know, thinks to ask you how you're doing. That just makes, you know, all the difference in the world. And I think it's, it's a, and I'm still such good friends with the people I went to art school with. They're like lifelong friends. And, you know, we meet up and we feel young again. So, you know, it's like, those people are special to me because they went through the same thing as me. They knew how it felt and we were on the same journey. So I kind of think that idea of, of having a journey is, is quite, is quite a special thing. And I think that really made me feel like I had a responsibility to do well, you know, really wanted to kind of like, um, be the best version that I could because you know, going to something like um, art school, I had to make sacrifices in terms of, you know, my family didn't have much money. You know, I was there going there and, and I, didn't, I didn't want to waste in any of those opportunities. So I kind of think that kind of mindset of being able to recognize when there is an opportunity in front of you and making sure that you take it. I think that's a really um, important thing as well. And, and, and I think sometimes having that feeling of responsibility and duty can play well for you because you kind of think, yeah, I do, I do have a duty to myself to get this done. I will get it done. And having that kind of like soft, but kind of like iron core of determination can really help you through when um, you are trying to kind of like keep going with a course of action. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, if you are comfortable with this okay, question, we'll if you're not, let well, me well. know. <laughs> um, <laughs> How does one go about pricing their art for sale and how do you price your art? Okay, so I think it's, you know, like what you want to do with pricing your art is you kind of think about, you know, you can think about it in different ways. Some artists price their art by square inch. They kind of work out, okay, I'm going to divide my canvas up and work out, you know, by square inch how much I'm going to charge for this painting. Um, other people would then think about an hourly rate and they would think about, okay, what hourly rate can sustain this piece of painting to kind of like make it worth my while to do. Um, you can also be thinking about the material cost that you've made. Um, if you've framed it, all those kind of factors, you're thinking, well, how much do I have to make this piece of artwork cost to make it, you know, so worthwhile? Um, the other thing that helps you price your artwork is the kind of galleries that you're showing at. Galleries kind of have a sort of, you know, price band. So to show your work in that gallery, your work will be within that price band. So you might have to put your price up to show in certain galleries. Um, so yeah, it's those kind of factors there and how much you're comfortable um, to sell it at. When you're a starting artist, you will sell work cheaper. You know, it's, it's fine, Look, everybody does that. Um, but as you establish, you start to kind of price yourself a little bit more um, professionally, I would say. And you've got to be careful as well with kind of pricing your work consistently so that people feel like, you know, you're selling it at a kind of consistent fair price. Okay, see, Sia, I believe Sia asked the question. Okay. I hope this helped. <laughs> Okay, Nathan is asking, Marion, what advice would you give to students getting frustrated with their personal work? Okay, so I mean, I think Sometimes walking away is good. You know, you can, um, if you get frustrated, you can walk away from that piece. Um, maybe try a different material, try a different angle at it. Um, and then you can sometimes come back with fresh ideas. Um, sometimes it's really useful to, um, well, so it depends how you go about doing your project. But if you're getting frustrated in your project and you've done something like a mood board, or you've done something like a mind map or a kind of ideas page, it sometimes can help to kind of like track back in your project to the beginning of the project and look at all the different strands that you didn't pick up 
and see at that moment if there's some other avenue that you think, oh, actually, this is this is interesting. I'm going to explore this other avenue and then follow that avenue and see where that takes you. And you might actually find yourself getting back to where you were when you were frustrated. I think if you're genuinely feeling frustrated with a piece of work, you definitely don't want to continue on it at that moment. Um, so even maybe just having a break for a short while, then coming back to it can be, I mean, I do this all the time, you know, like if I'm working on something and I get to the point where some of the marks that I'm making are not improving it, <laughs> at that point, I think, okay, maybe just stop, um, go away, do something else. And then often that's enough um, to actually just clear my mind. And then when I come back at it, I see what the problem is, why I didn't, you know, I was getting frustrated. So either you know, circling back through your project to see if there's other strands that you can then pull out and work from, taking a break, going back to your piece of work with fresh eyes or getting an opinion, you know, so maybe, you know, if you're in um, coaching, take it to your coach, ask your coach, you say, I'm, I'm frustrated with this. Why do you think that is? And they could give you some insight and give you some options to explore as well. So those are kind of avenues that I would explore um, if I was a student and um, getting stuck with my work. What, what you what you don't want to do is rip it up and throw it in the fire that, because then you can't fix it. <laughs> yeah, never throw your art away. <laughs> Actually, Stephen King, I know it's literature, literature, but it's still art. Yeah. He actually threw away uh, like the beginnings of Carrie. Yeah. And his wife actually put it out of the trash and yeah. told him to finish it because it was good. Yeah, so, we, we need someone we to go. pull our work out of the trash and tell us to keep going. <laughs> and I think sometimes and it's one of the classics. No. That, that's kind of the so, equivalent, isn't yeah. it, to what the coaches can do sometimes? Because sometimes, you know, you're nearly there with something. And sometimes um, the closer you are to making progress, the more frustrated you get with it because you know that you're nearly there. You know you can get to that next level, but you're just not quite there yet. So, yeah, I think that kind of metaphor of someone else being able to look at your work and see that kind of spark of something there for you can really help you with then being able to go back into that work and, and make it stronger. So, yeah, I think I think um, frustrations can be dealt with in lots of different ways. Um, but yeah, definitely sharing your work, having a break from it. Those are the kind of main things. Yeah. And I believe Josh always says, if it doesn't hurt, you're not doing it right. <laughs> if, or if it doesn't get you frustrated, you're not doing it right. It's something along, along those words. It's not like <laughs> word by word, but it's something around those lines. <laughs> okay. We have a question from Jin. Mm -hmm. Um, what tips does Marianne have for drawing and learning daily? Okay, so I think um, simple things, make it easy for yourself, have have stuff to hand, you know, like make sure that you don't have to do a big elaborate setup every single time you have to draw, carry your sketchbook around with you, take joy in everyday life. So, you know, one of my favorite Glenn Vilpu, um kind of things that he says is if you're sitting, you're drawing. So have your sketchbook with you have your pencil, you know, make sure that you kind of um, carry those things around with you, you know, fill your sketchbook up with ideas. So, you know, have lots of um, imagery, printouts, different things that you can call upon when you've got that feeling of, I don't know what to draw, flip through your inspiration book, find something to draw. And um, the other thing that, that can be really great fun is just kind of like collecting objects, collecting things so that you've always got little interesting things to draw from. It's really powerful to draw from life. So having lots of things round about you to, to kind of like select from can be really, really good. And I think as well, what I like to do when, when I'm kind of tired, you know, I'm too tired to really think. That's when I do a lot of, you know, like my kind of line exercises, my kind of drills. And um, just when I'm kind of like relaxing, I quite like to just try out those simple pencil dot to dot exercises, different things like that. They really kind of keep me alert, develop my skills, but at the same time, I'm not having to deal with complex problems of solving how to make a good picture. So I think from that point of view, if you're trying to fit art into your daily life, I would say that one of the most important things is to actually then think about what can I do just now? If you're really tired, don't start something really complex. Think about the artwork that you can do in that in that moment. Okay. 
Okay, beautiful. Um, before we continue, I would like to ask, uh, to like ask, um, since we value your feedback, you know, at New Masters Academy and we strive to provide the best online art education possible, I would like to like ask you all to fill out our feedback form. By filling out this form, you will be entered into a separate raffle for the chance of winning a free one-on-one -on -one coaching or a group coaching access. So be sure to fill it out and enter that raffle, guys. But yeah, um, continuing with the questions. Lance is asking, what advice would you give to somebody who is pursuing art later in their life? Um, yeah, just go for it, <laughs> enjoy it. Um, uh, join us. <laughs> Because this is the place, you know, the, this is the best place um, to, to do art. And um, I think just having the kind of like mindset of even if you're spending something like half an hour a day, you're still making progress. So I think one of the kind of things that I see the kind of older students sometimes struggle with is their levels of expectations of what they want from themselves, because often they're high achievers or they have excelled in another area. So I think one of the most important things when you're an older learner is to kind of like accept your status as a beginner and realize that it will take time to get as good as you want to get, but know that if you keep on being consistent with your practice, putting a, um, aside that time every day to do it, you will get there. And, you know, certainly from my own personal point of view, it's really been incredible being part of the community here. Um, and that's one of the things as a mother as well, like um, being a person that's kind of busy at school, then coming home and being busy in the family, having a community that's there that I don't have to, you know, rush off to go to or take time um, traveling to does make a big difference as a sort of um, older learner. Being able to kind of just join in with things when I'm at home really, really helps me. So I think, um, yeah, for the older learner, Give yourself time, trust in actually, well, trust in the process of following these lessons. They will they will help you. But the other thing that you want to do is make sure that you've got some um, fun stuff in there too, that you're doing stuff that kind of brings you happiness and joy. And don't focus too much only on the fundamentals, but think about how you can apply those to doing artwork that you want to develop to, so that you're actually doing your own personal work at the same time as doing your studies because I think sometimes when you're older you think often oh I need to study before I'm good enough to do this I need to study that I'm not good enough to do this yet and you maybe not be but you will learn a lot in doing the things that you're not quite good enough yet that will then inform the stuff that you do need to do and you also will then have a series of work that you can look back at and um, evaluate as you make more progress so I hope that answers <laughs> I believe that answers it pretty well. I was also like maybe to add that whatever you're studying at the moment, try to implement it in your personal artwork, yeah. the artwork you do for fun. Yeah. It's such a good way to do it. Then you just like, yeah, you practice yeah. through having fun. Yeah. So you practice, is it you practice through your practice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm always too scared to yeah, start projects. Yeah, stop being scared. Uh, you yeah, know. you know, what's the worst that can happen? Because I always say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I always, I, I'm one of those guilty ones that always says like, oh, I'll, I have so many good ideas. I'll just like write them down yeah. and I'll do them, you know, once I get good enough, yeah. once I'm better than And you know what, well, Bigley, that's but, the thing that children yeah. don't ever do. Children don't ever do that with their good idea. They're never like, oh, well, I'm not, you know, really good yet. If they have a good idea, they get it out there. <laughs> and that's why they're, you know, when you look through children's yeah. work, you're like, wow, it's so creative. It's because they give themselves the chance to be creative. So I think it's about not having so much kind of like doubt, or if you do have doubt, ignore it and do it anyway. Yeah, do it, do, do it. it scared. Yeah. Do it scared. I think yeah, that's a good way push, to go through life. <laughs> yeah. Just, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing now with our, uh, the tarot card event. Yeah. Like, 
I never actually did a personal project like this ever before, yeah. but I'm very enjoying it. Yeah. Like I'm pretty and much I think enjoying so, it. So right many now. people in the community are enjoying those, you know, like shared moments. And, you know, it's kind of like then, yeah. like we saw with the prom, I mean, it's just pushing people to try things that they felt that they weren't quite ready for, but then they do a marvelous job of it. So it's, it's exciting to kind of then apply the knowledge into the more personal projects. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Jen on Discord is asking, what would you tell a student that's considering quitting art? And she put it in <laughs> to like, what, what are those called? I'll, I'll call them quotation marks, even though they're yeah. not hypothetical questions. <laughs> you know, I would, I would actually talk, talk to the student and ask them what's going on. Because it could be that they've got a lot of stressors and um, different factors going on in their life at that moment. And it feels like the art is the thing that's just tipping them over the edge of being able to cope. So I would really just have a discussion about what's in their life, how they kind of rebalance it, how much, you know, do they actually want to keep continuing with art? Because there will be some people that, you know, maybe they've tried it, they've explored it, they might actually want to shift to doing something different and that that's fine. But if it's someone that's really wanted to continue with art, but they're, they're wanting to quit, I'd, I'd kind of get, you know, some kind of analysis going on about why that is, what are the factors, what are the barriers that are stopping them from continuing? And then I would try and get them to do some gentle things, gentle things that are low bar, low risk, but that get them back into creating art again, that, you know, aren't about, um, you know, making a great piece of art, but are just really about getting them back into daily good habits or getting them, you know, comfortable with, with doing art again. And it might even be a case of rejigging their schedule um, or having a break, because sometimes you do need a holiday as well. And this is the thing as as artists, you know, we can forget that sometimes people take breaks from doing things and it can be useful to maybe just take one or two weeks away and then you've had a chance to rest, a chance to regroup. And often what you'll find is that when you go back to doing your art, you've got that energy as well. So it's about trying to discover what the situation actually is at its base level you know what are the reasons that you want to quit art and that will be different for lots of different um people yeah <clears throat> uh, we have another question from Ez, which we kind of like already answered like halfway yeah as a caregiver i ask how did you find time blocks which for me aren't very long to get your work done when what you really want to do is something mindless but then i want to create too so for me um and this is gonna you know easier work <laughs> or easier materials helped me so when my children were quite small i did a lot of soft pastel work because um soft pastels don't dry um they don't smell and the painting stays exactly the same as it does when you stop it so you can start and stop, start and stop really easily because there's no drying process. There's no kind of like, you know, you just put the things back in the box and they're away. You don't have to clean brushes. You don't have to um, deal with anything else. Um, and the same thing, same experience happened to me again when I was doing Elias class with the digital um, painting. So with the digital painting, um, it's exactly the same as pastel. Um, you just stop when you stop and then you pick it back up again when you pick it back up again. I know there's been times when I've, <laughs> I might have burned one or two dinners doing it this way, but there's been times when I've been like, you know, stirring the dinner, then running back through and doing a little bit more drawing, then go back in and do a bit more stirring. And it's about kind of just like being able to switch focus is important. And I've been, you know, I'm quite good at that. I'm quite good at being able to back in this space. So I think having media that you can um, explore with, um, if you're wanting to do, you know, master studies are quite good as well. If you're wanting to do something that you don't have to work out what the picture is, but you want to be making a picture that, that is satisfyingly a picture rather than just a drill, a master study can be a really nice way of doing that too. Yeah, um, I'm definitely in the club. Like I burned dinner <laughs> doing my art. <laughs> <laughs> And so is a friendly cat from the from the Discord chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, there there so, may have been one or two burned dinners in, in my time, but you know, there's usually something edible. Yeah, sometimes, usually, 
<laughs> that or takeout. Yeah. If that happens, we usually get takeout. <laughs> as long as you don't burn anything down, you're yeah. good. <laughs> All right, Jen from Discord is asking how to create your own study plan. Okay, so I think um, you need to just analyze what's in your life, what has to be done. Okay, so first of all, put everything that's essential into your life. You know, so if you have a job outside of your art, you need to put that in. If you've got family commitments that need done, you also need to schedule in some time for rest, um, time for things like um, health and fitness, you know, actually leaving the house. So you just look at everything that you need to have in your life and then see what you've got left and think about how you can fit art into it. Um, with your health and fitness, maybe that could be like going for walks and um, taking photographs to inspire you. Um, you can take your sketchbook into work, maybe draw on your lunch break. Uh, a lot of students do really well when they set their schedules to getting up earlier. So maybe setting your alarm, maybe one or two hours earlier than you normally would. And then, you know, getting up early enough to have some time that's quiet. And that's something I recommend with young children actually is trying to capture those moments when either the children are in bed sleeping or you've got up nice and early and you've got the house to yourself. Um, take those times to actually um, do some work for yourself. But I think, I think with a lot of things, you've just got to analyze what has to be done and then see what you can do with what is left and then maximize what you can do with, with what you've got left. Okay, we're nearing the end of our Q&A time and we have two questions okay, left. Lovely. Are you okay with taking both? Yeah, I think so. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I hope I pronounced this wrong, Mati is asking, is this a good place to be for somebody with anxiety around learning? Perfectionist type with need for feedback to keep going to be? Well, I would say this is the perfect place to be around because, um, I mean, if you're someone who's just signed up for the four year plan, you've got access to group coaching and there's a lot of group coaching. So, you know, there's a lot of support from the coaches with the work and, you know, they will be able to give you that feedback and, and sometimes the feedback you need is, you know, critical, change this, change this, change this, but also the feedback of, you know what, you're heading along the right lines, this is looking good, you're doing a good job, that's, that's there for you. Or if you're doing the interactive courses, you get your feedback as well. So, you know, you get, um, I mean, you can get feedback on, on just about everything you're doing. So, I mean, I think I couldn't imagine anywhere else. <laughs> I mean, certainly, you know, when I was at art school, like I was talking um, earlier on, you know, my tutors, I would see them like, you know, you know, maybe once a week, but for about a second, um, but only structured, you know, like once a term, and then they would either destroy you or build you up. But I mean, here, you're going to be able to see coaches multiple times a week, you've got interactive TAs willing to help you. But beyond that as well, you've got community um, members who will say things like, wow, that's really great. I can see you're making progress. This is looking really good. I love what you've done there. So you've got a really nice kind of like full spectrum of support. So yeah, I mean, and I've seen lots of students who do get nervous about, you know, perfectionism and worry about, I mean, because initially it can be terrifying to show your work because you're scared that um, people will say it's not very good or, you know, it's just such a fear when it's something quite personal as well but gradually you get used to showing your work and it becomes less intensely personal and you become more analytical about looking at your work and you begin to look at it with a sort of critique side so you're kind of going yeah I like this bit this bit's working really well I'm enjoying that but yeah maybe I could develop this bit a little bit better and you begin to have that emotional distance from your work as, as you kind of like move further on yeah i uh, i i don't want to add too much on your answers but like we all know i'm that kind <laughs> of a type i i strive to perfectionism and it actually hindered me so much for like two years of my life where i was only doing the lines yeah because you like, felt you like know, they had to be point perfect exercise. before you could move on Exactly. Yeah. That's why my name, Wiggly yeah. Line. All my lines were always wobbly and wiggly until I got them straight and I conquered yeah. them. Like I can make pretty decent lines yeah. now, but it took me two years 
without doing anything else yeah. i was like just pinpointing into those lines so yeah yeah i i know how that is it's it's hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh we have uh one more question okay. from peter Go for it. where do you see yourself going with your personal art goals in the future do you have any long-term plans you are happy sharing or projects you want to do okay, next? Okay, so I think the, the next project that I'm kind of exploring is the idea of multiple figures and environments. And I kind of want to do those um, spaces that are sort of intimate, that show relationships between people. And I want to kind of just have it sort of reflective and quiet. So that's the, the area that I'm exploring. So. Obviously, I need to get some perspective on that <laughs> and um, do a little bit of combining things together. So, yeah, so a little bit more ambitious in scale as well. And I'm, I'm in talks, I'm in negotiations just now with my husband about how we can have bigger studio space, which, again, I think is something that lots of us have experience of when we're kind of like juggling busy family lives. It's about how to get the actual physical space to do the work. So it's not always just about um, time, it's about having the space. So yeah, I'm wanting to move on to, um, yeah, scenes really. And yeah, sort of quiet spaces is what I'm looking to paint next. Okay. Um, before we end the Q&A for the day, I would like to let everybody know that after this, we are gonna host a, um, master study tuesday event in our the events section so everybody welcome i believe volway already started it so feel free to join that uh he will post some pictures from like master's work and you'll be all studying it you can also do your own work but it's all happening in our discord channel in our digital campus site so everybody welcome but yeah, Marian, uh, you want to add? Yeah, a well, last yeah, thought you know, before just, we end just um, thank you so much, everybody, for coming, and just just keep going, keep on, you know, making your art, and it, and it, you know, it's beautiful. It'll all be good, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's work. It's always exciting to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and with that, I would like you. I would like you. Yeah, I would <laughs> like to thank you for your time. Thank you. I mean, I would also like to thank you <laughs> <laughs> for this great Q&A. So yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for answering our questions, Marian. It was lovely. You all can see her in the Discord. She's super active. <laughs> She's very helpful. Uh, so yeah, don't be a stranger, yeah. guys. Yeah, see you Bye. all on Discord. So yeah, thank you again, Marian. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye.